Well, hello, Stephanie. I am so excited that we are finally getting the chance to launch everybody what is going to be a hella fied conversation series. And this is just number one in it. So Stephanie, I want you to first tell folks who you are, because I know based on meeting you online at the Human Design Conference, that's right, we, we went to an online conference in September of 2022, um, and it was powerful, but there were a number of people in the chat that I just kept saying, who are these folks? And if you're listening, you can hear my neighbors. I, I live right in the midst of U Street in DC. So you're going to hear all kinds of stuff because we're keeping it real. We're keeping, keeping it real. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we decided to um, continue the conversation we were having in the chat room during the conference. And we agreed to um, monthly calls with another a fabulous woman, Octavia, giving a shout out to Octavia. So tell everybody who you are. Mm. This question is so deep. I think it's deeper than what most of us think about, right? And so I'll be honest and say, I'm going to share with you what comes out. Who I am is. Um, you know, at the core, I'm a bridge builder and I'm a connector of seemingly not connectable ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'm somebody who's a storyteller. And so by profession, I am a brand storytelling coach and uh, also a human design specialist. And my mission in life is to empower people from underrepresented backgrounds to thrive more in their life and the work in their own work by being unapologetically you. And that for me is all about being able to unlock the true story of who you are and the story that only you were destined to tell in this world. And when you can claim that, own it and speak it, you eliminate competition in your work because nobody else has the unique combination that is you. Mm -hmm. And you can really influence and inspire and create change from who you are and the best of who you are. And so it's been a long journey to get there, to get to this place of really being able to understand that my mission is around each person finding your own story. And it began when I was 10 years old and I was a shy, I was a shy girl. And for some reason, strangers would come up to me and tell me their life stories, which was baffling to me, you know, on the subway or a coworker, or this or that. And, um, and what I learned from that experience is like people from all walks of life who are just sharing their stories with me is that when you talk about don't judge a book by its cover, mm -hmm. I learned that there was like a world inside every single person that looks so different from whatever that snap judgment would be. And I also know that that was true for myself too. And so, you know, the whole of me includes so many things, but I have a bicultural identity as an Asian American, you know, and I identify as a woman of color. And I've been a person of color who's lived in a myriad of communities, most of the time, almost all of them. Um, I was the only one that looked like me, you know, mm -hmm. or culturally was like me. And so that bridge builder piece, what I learned to do is that maybe in the beginning when I felt like I was somebody, I focused so much on not belonging. I focused so much on being an outsider or being the weirdo or, you know, whatever story was being woven outside of me. And what I learned was like all of those experiences helped me to be attuned to um, seeing where we connect in really surprising ways. And that's really what I've learned. And so now I understand like myself to be someone who, in, who really just 
uh, is always a seeker of stories and, a, and somebody who helps other people find their voice. Mm. Juicy, layered, mm. the realness, the unapologetic you. Welcome. Mm -hmm to the Thriving Mindfully Podcast. You are home, baby. I have a soul sister love here, everybody. So we're going to dive deep into, um, into something that Stephanie and I have both uh, had our own journey in, and it's called human design. And if you listen to a previous episode of the Thriving Mindfully community, I mean, podcast, we are a community, mm -hmm. um, you'll know that I have a slightly different take on what human design is. And before we started the podcast, Stephanie and I were talking about it. And I, I told her I really wanted her to share her own definition of what it is and how she has come to this in her journey. Because it's great to read books. It's great to see social media posts. It's wonderful to go to conferences, to listen to podcasts, to watch videos from other folks. But until you make something your own, it, it doesn't sit in your body, you know, until you claim it and you own it. That is a part of embodying any practice you put your own words to it make it have meaning make it make sense to yourself so stephanie tell us what is this thing called human design how do you define it when when did it pop up in your life i love that you talked about human design being something that we each get to discover mm -hmm. and describe for ourselves for me, it began as a tool for energy management and beating burnout. So that, that was how I first came to it, was I came from a place of utter depletion um, and depletion when I was, and I was baffled by it. I was baffled by it because um, now I understand in this community that many folks identify with being high achieving and I do as well. And in the earlier part of my life, I used to be a workaholic and, you know, and I think also as a woman of color too, who felt like you, like a woman and a person of color, there was that feeling you had to do twice as much to be considered good enough. And so I had done that for years and years in my twenties and my thirties. and. I I had burnt out before. So I holding in self-care tools. Now I'm in my fifties. Now I am, I've built a business for my purpose. Now I've been in the place where I am doing work that literally lights me up. That gives me a happy dance. That's so tied into like, like my spiritual sense of myself. And I went and the feeling I would get doing the work was that I felt like I used to say to people, I feel like I have a rechargeable battery because you know, that that's how I felt. And I had all this joy. So when the burnout happened in the middle of a, my first launch of a program, and I literally just had a complete empty tank, I was so confused. I was like, I don't understand how now it's like, I'm aligned to my purpose. I'm not just working to work or prove myself. I'm not even doing that. I'm working from a place of my heart. So why am I so exhausted? And a client of mine who was an energy healer and I was helping her build her brand story had told me about human design. And Ananda, just like you said about how reading books and charts, I had looked at my, looked up my chart six months before. There was a lot of symbols, a lot of information. It didn't really make sense for me. I only knew there was something about this key to unlocking energy that I needed to look into. So what I, I, I learned that I was not working in energetic alignment to who I was. I was spiritually there. I was per my purpose there. In human design terms, there's five different energy types. I learned I was a projector um, and a projector um, is someone who, even if they're doing something with joy, 
their battery is going to run out and that rest is integral to the creative juices flowing for a projector. But I was working like Ananda is a manifesting gener generator, right? I was actually operating as a manifesting generator. Yeah. And that's why I tapped out. So that was the very first thing I, I started studying about my energy type. And um, so that's the very first thing is, is the energy management piece and learning how to run my business, how to um, serve and how in my personal life as a mom, you know, as a partner, as, um, as somebody who, you know, is a volunteer and a citizen in the world, how to do it without feeling like all of that. The second piece is it's a boundary management tool, which is for me, which is very tied to the energy piece as somebody who I, I you know, I was somebody who's always been a very highly sensitive person and somebody who was very, very empathetic and somebody who struggled um, to be able to hold space for other, you know, I'm, I, I was the go-to therapist of my high school and, you know, all, it doesn't matter like what group you were with, you were calling me at midnight, you know? Wow. And, and in college, the same thing. I didn't, I didn't know how to give without feeling then overcome mm -hmm. by other people's emotions Mm -hmm. And in my family as well, too, because in my family of origin, you know, there was, you know, there's been um, mental illness, there's been depression, there's people who struggle with addiction, and I was the rescuer. Wow. And, you know, so I had already done all of this work, like outside things like therapy. And, you know, I belong to a 12 step program for family members of alcoholics, which has been a godsend for me for 20 years. And yet, like with all of these things, human design showed me specifically in my body where I have, where I am open. And it, what it really helped me was get really practical and specific to go, oh my gosh, instead of kind of knowing I'm generally an empathetic person and I generally need to take care of myself and I need to generally make boundaries, I actually know what parts of my body need healthy boundaries the most and how to manage something like people's emotions or people's ideas and being overwhelmed with people's ideas or people's fears. And I was like, wow, I can actually connect the dots now and be much more uh, nuanced about how to have boundaries and still interact with other people. So those are my two. And then the third one I would say is affirming who I am. So, you know, what I love about human design is to me, it gives us the story of who we came into the world with, like this divine DNA. And some of it in the human design map is conscious and some of it's unconscious. Mm -hmm. So what I loved was it gave me permission to double down on the gifts that I love that maybe society may or may not find valuable. Mm -hmm. Or my parents, you know, um, just feeling like the way, um, there were, there were things that I wanted to do that has taken a long time for me to step out and do because it's not necessarily seen as um, important or prestigious or even my parents might not even get it, you know, or my family, you know, um, were guiding me in one direction, but I've always felt called to go in another direction and I did it anyway. And human design is like, boop, there you go. Right on the blueprint there is like, this is what my God said, yes, I want you to do the storytelling thing. Mm -hmm. You know, even when there wasn't an occupation for that, it's like, there it is. I've got a bunch of things that talk about storytelling and to just lean into that purpose. So those are the three things that it really works for me and what I love to share with others as well too. I love that you have used it as an energy management tool, a boundary management tool and a self-affirmation tool in particular with dealing with deconditioning, yes. leaving what we have gotten from family, from culture, from gender, from all of what our identities, society. That is so key. I love that you, you told us about 
these three things because it gives folks, especially people that are um, people of color, BIPOC folks, people who are not white, male, uh, straight, cis folk walking this earth. Yeah. Everybody else, all of us, <laughs> you know, it gives us something to um to look at and it gives us language that's so very important for me it's like when i'm when i when i walked into or when, let's say when when human design walked into my life yeah the language and being able to recognize right in my gut as a manifesting generator you called me out you know <laughs> to know that my shit was fucked up over things not working out because yeah. I wasn't following my design. And I would get, when I saw the not self for a manifesting generator and I looked over my recent uh, scrapes and wounds that I was yeah. crying about and ready to quit. Your not self theme is frustration, right? Yes, frustration. Yeah. And the flip piece of that is patience. And Lord knows that has been my Achilles heel. You know, that has been the monkey on my back and the quitting things. Um, and then being more passionate and having people say, you need to choose one thing, but, one thing. but, oh doing, but doing 50 Come zillion on. 50 zillion things, you know, it gave me as a 50 something year old woman, it, it, it said, baby, you've been following the path, just lean into it. And we're here to help you lean into it with a little more grace yeah. and a lot more space to just be open to this journey and not necessarily the destination, but to really look at the journey. And so now that we have an idea of how human design walked into your life and how you define it and how you share it with folks, what practices and resources and communities have you used to nurture your human design? Because I think that's really important. I think what makes our connection super special is the fact that we connected around a conference um, at a time when two amazing women were um, and are still working on the book. The book is coming out at some point. I'm not certain when, but I know it's coming. Um, A.C. Brown and Asha, and if you know Asha's last name, because it's, it's escaping me, but Asha, forgive us. Um, these two women have have created a book and it is specifically for BIPOC folk. And I will include the name and the link to all of this in the show notes. So just know it, my brain is like, Ooh. me too. It's that 50 something and giving permission for our, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> really it really but is. It really is. So what what are you using or what have you used to cultivate your relationship? Because you also mentioned that you're a human design specialist. So you've been doing some deep cultivation. Yes, I've done some deep cultivation and I am like, I'm client number one, you know? So for me, um, it starts with um, putting practices. It's, it's an experiment and a practice, right? So I started started first with, um, understanding how my energetics work for me, and then shifting my life, my calendar, how I work to be in tune with how my ener energetic body works. So how that looks for me as a projector and for anyone out there who identifies a projector or you parent a projector or you love a projector, one of the key things that I've been experimenting with is how um, really we are at our best when we um, when we spend two to three hours a day for output, and what output looks like is meetings with other people, or interacting with others, or um, doing physical output work with results, and that runs. Getting back to deconditioning, it runs right in the face of 
the way we look at work is like, it's not work if you have something to show for it. So what I did was I actually changed up as both a human design coach and also in my business is that instead of, you know, I put limits on my meetings. So every day it's like, you know, it's a, it's a max of, you know, two meetings a day, which was really at first challenging for me to do. I'm like, what if I, you know, miss out on something, but I actually can show up better, especially because my body getting back to boundary management, it's like, I'm very, very open. I'm very attuned to and present um, with who's in front of me. And that, and I, I think I underestimated how much work that is, you know, like really to, to give like that. And so, yeah, so now it's like my count, my, my automatic scheduler, you know, has a maximum of two meetings um, a day. And then even how I worked with um, VIP clients as well too, and how I spread them out so that I can really give my best. And then I plan rest time afterwards. So that's been interesting. So now in my calendar, I have a blocked out time from one to three, because that was when I noticed my energy always dipped, always. When I was in college, I'd be drinking one of them super gulp Pepsis. And, you know, I thought I could trick myself. If I take a class at 1 PM that yes. I absolutely love, that's going to fix the problem, but I'm still falling asleep and like drooling on the desk or whatever, unless I drink this big 32 ounce and I'm just jacked up. And I mean, I was fighting against it all along. When I was a kid, I was the kid that would go down for afternoon naps with no you know, my brother would be like still, you know, sometimes he and I would play and mm -hmm. I would build in, in the story, a nap into how we play. <laughs> and then I could hear him rustling out there, you know, and he's like, is it time for the, and I'm like, nope, not yet. You know? So I intuitively one to three is I, it's now blocked out. It's called horizontal thinking time. Wow. And so here's another thing I, I so I started practicing that and it was hard at first, you know, I had a client, you know, I was building a, a big brand story for her and she had all these like really cool disparate things coming together. And I noticed that mentally I was struggling to, you know, come together with something um, for her. So I did the horizontal thinking thing as a projector. I was like, you know what, like the day, the day it was due, I still didn't quite have it together. And I said, I need to meditate. So I got, and actually I laid on the floor of my office and I meditated. And as I was meditating without expecting it, her story popped out. I had my phone next to me. I was like, oh, I just got a hit. And I went, da, 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 da. And then I went like, oh, da, 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 da. So now I actually do a lot of my strategizing. Lying back and napping is usually when the creative things come out, you know, articles for blogs, things like that. It, I realized I was sort of doing it before, but now I actually make room mm. to do that for real. And another one is following our strategy and our authority. Yeah. Right. So if we attune our body um, for the energy type, then we will have more energy. And then it's like, now what do we do with that? So for me, the practice with my, um, with authority is what part of your body was designed to make your life decisions? because we've been trained to make our brain do that. And now I've been practicing and teaching my, um, my, my human design clients that the brain is like Google. It does a great job of, of like gathering information, analyzing information, you know, all this stuff, but you would never ask Google, like Google, uh, you know, do I move to Kansas or not? You know, <laughs> you might be like, 10 places to live in Kansas or the happiest towns in the, you know, but you're never going to ask Google to make your life decision. So now that I understand that my authority for me lives in my heart. And one of the things I'm supposed to do in, um, as an ego, it's called an ego um, authority is I'm supposed to ask, is my heart in this? Yes or no. And then what's in it for me, which was a question I never asked myself always doing for others, you know, and this authority, only 0.2% of the population has it. 
So I conditioned my way out of and was always using my mind in a lot of places um, because it won't make sense to other people. And that's one of the things that I learned is like the set, that second piece actually brought me to tears about now I ask what's in it for me, um, which always felt selfish. But I understand in human design, like being enlighteningly selfish means I can give from the best of me. So that has changed my life because that's led me to a, saying no a lot more often than even like in therapy, learning how to say no mm -hmm. and all of these yeah. things. So now it's like, if it doesn't pass the test for my authority of if there's something not in it for me, and it was, it's, it was hard initially, we're coming on the holidays here. Last holiday, I was like, let me experiment with this. You know, it's like getting lots of invitations to, and, and people like I love to hang out with or, you know, opportunities that might on paper look really fabulous for me mm -hmm. and going, I should do that. I should do that. So it's shifted the plate from a plate of shoulds mm -hmm. to a plate to choosing. Like, I think we, you and I have talked a lot about the buffet. I feel like human design gives us the, the option to look at life like a buffet mm -hmm. and then choosing on the basis of our own authority, what goes on the plate. And yeah. you know, Zen, Zen Buddhists talk about um, coming to God with an empty rice bowl. Because if you come with it filled, there's no place for God to put the good stuff. Dig it. Right? And we're just filling it with stuff like FOMO. You should be doing <laughs> this. Like you're missing out on that. And like, what do you mean you're not going to do this with that person? They're a very important person. Or, you know, there's a million reasons. Or you're going to make more money this way. Mm -hmm. Over the last year and a half, that has been a practice of mine is no go. No go if, if my heart's not in it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to explain why. And no go if I feel like it's, there's not something in it for me because my husband has, you know, when I, like, when I first learned that it was like, I was always afraid of being selfish. So it was just selfless. And my husband, even years ago said to me, Stephanie, you need to push your own agenda. And I remember getting mad at him about it. And then I realized he was attuned to my energy all along. Because my human design coach has said, you know, the people who have this authority of asking this question are the people who they have found to be like the least selfish people. So it actually is serving me and the universe when I actually ask myself that question or else I become bitter as a projector, which is my not self theme. So those are my practices now is rest, horizontal thinking time and just letting myself nap away. Um, another practice I do as a projector is 15 minutes of fascination at minimum a day following my fascinations, which again, is like, seems counterintuitive for anyone who's high achieving, right? Like, well, if it's not going to directly tie into supporting your business, isn't that a waste of time? And actually it's like, well, this year it was all about knitting. I decided I want to learn. I was fascinated by knitting. So I started knitting and, you know, as I'm knitting and, you know, my mind frees up, it was like ideas started to come to me and not that I was intentionally doing that. Mm -hmm. and my anxiety was going down with the news and all these kinds of things. So it really allows me to empty out when I follow my fascinations too. And, um, and then community wise, um, I belong to a group right now called HD besties that, uh, day Luna life, um, uh, opened up a few months ago. And that's, that's been a, um, a cool place to uh, expand more and embrace and see how everyone is so different and seeing, watching people live and practice and experiment their design in different ways and go, wow, like, it's just such a great reminder that whether, you know, it helps me in my relationships because then it's like my husband is a, um, a five, one manifesting generator with an emotional authority. And we have started practicing whenever we make decisions, you know, it's like, so what's your authority telling you? And, you know, so that practice has been really cool too. I love that. Tell your husband, he has a soul sister. I'm a five, one sacral authority manifesting. Yes. So yeah, there's no coincidences to any, any of this, you know, your your journey um, in human design is rich in 
and um, has so many twists and turns. I want to find out from you, how did you decide like, okay, human design is working for you. It's, yeah. it's, it's changing your life. It's transforming. What was the thing that spiced up your human design experience to get you into a place of, hey, you know what? I want to be able to offer this to my clients as a human design coach, specialist. I call myself a doula because I help people give birth. Yeah, I love that. Uh, to different parts of themselves through the human design um, tools. Tell us a little bit about that because I know we have some folks who who may be like us when you you get into something and it's and you go way all in, in. and you get yes. and you see that it works for you so now you definitely have to like spread the gospel to others. Well, it's interesting on the spreading the gospel piece for me as a projector you know, my, my strategy for spreading the gospel is that I, you know, as they say, you wait for recognition and the invitation. So that, that actually helped me really understand like how I spread the spice around essentially is I'm in my kitchen. I'm spicing up my own life, you know, and I get to share because I'm fascinated and excited, you know, like just with people who are interested, who are curious in my community. And it starts with me sharing stories of how it's really changing my own life um, to people who see me, who, um, who trust me, and then they want to lean in and do more. So that is the way I go about it. But the spice and like, so in terms of what dishes was I making, you know, <laughs> for the last year, let's say with human design, I started with myself and getting my energy rebounded back so that my joy and my energy, they're playing on the same team. I made some bold decisions that had people head scratching, um, which was the rest and cocooning and like I'm not going to take clients for these two months because I'm going inside my cocoon and and then watching how that actually leads to more flourishing right so a lot of people who are projectors especially high achieving projectors it's tough it's tough to believe by slowing down or resting is going to get you where you want to be um, especially because our self theme is success. So even when, you know, I used to rest, I used to call it productive procrastination. So if I was procrastinating, it had to lead to some kind of result, you know, so it's like, I'm going to clean my bathroom or I'm going to organize my email or whatever it is. So, and then I think also too, it's, you know, my, my husband, it's interesting because I pulled his chart before he had an interest in it, just so I could spice up our relationship by letting him be who he is or just experimenting and um, encouraging, you know, um, him to be more like joy, like fascination is a thing for projectors and joy is a thing, as you know, for manifesting generators. So instead of taking personally, if he wanted to take some time, like a lot of time and get lost in playing guitar or something like that, just really like letting him go and knowing that that's not a rejection or him alienating me, you know? And it's like, suddenly we have more juice for each other. And he was wary of human design at first. Um, he didn't see how it could connect with being a Christian or he was a former Catholic. So I think it kind of had this, yeah, I can't really say for sure, like what he thought it was, you know, per se or some kind of pagan thing, but it was really interesting that um, as I was like making room for him to make room and, um, and he watching me like be more lit up about my life. And then I gave him a reading when I became a certified reader and then he became lit up. And then he said, this is the most life-changing thing that's ever happened. And then our relationship got deeper and richer. 
And we actually started parenting our children. Then we started looking at the charts of our kids. We have one, one son who's a young adult with special needs. And we started applying like simple, it, I mean, the spice was sort of the, what would happen if, you know, with our son who his um, best digestion is, is to be in a low sound environment. This kid loves hip hop and in his, and, and he has a lot of cognitive challenges. And, um, and we decided what, you know, let's, let's take him to a restaurant and find the quietest booth. Yeah. And my kid has, um, you know, verbal comprehension of a, a three-year-old in his assessments, right? Suddenly he was like telling stories. Suddenly he was just, it was like his brain like could rest. Yeah. And more of his self started coming out. Mm. That to me is the spice of life right there. Mm. People can live fully in their presence and mm -hmm. be fully expressed and mm -hmm. we can really connect with each other. Like that's super juicy, you know? for me. And so, yeah. And so human design for me has been about, um, it's almost like your natural caffeine. Yes. I love having a ginger kick in my, in my drinks. So it's like giving me a little bit of, of ginger, more of my creativity coming back into my life. Whereas before it's like, there's so many distractions, there's so much stuff and having permission to, again, protect and preserve the parts of your body and your gifts that need what they need. And then places where um, you need the energy of others yeah. and playing in that dance. Mm -hmm. It's like, suddenly I have more creativity. I have more love. I have more understanding. Mm -hmm. um, the conflicts don't feel so personal. The conflicts can be way more constructive you know, and um, yeah, so for me that that's, that's how like, and I think by me, it, you know, sharing specific situations in my newsletters or, you know, people who are already signed into my community, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sharing about how excited I am and then allowing people to come to me going, you know, I could use some of that spice. I so appreciate you sharing how spicy it has been um, for you and your family. Um, I think that's another gift that human design gives us is first understanding and taking care of yourself and then how we show up in our relationships. How are we showing up? And then how people are showing up to us and where can we find um, a meeting, you know, a healthy meeting in the middle, the middle path. How can we do that? Um, it's, it takes time, everybody. This is not something that is going to um, just presto magic. It is magic and it is it's magic. It's messy because there's people involved yeah. and it looks hairy, scary because it, it comes off with all these different shapes and all this information, the numbers, the planets, all these different things. What I value most about our conversations is that it is um, experimentation. It's treating it as, hey, I've tried X, Y, Z. Why not try this? It won't hurt. I mean, because you have already tried some things. So give it a yeah. try. And you being very transparent in how you've experimented and how that has landed with you, shaped and transformed your experience in your own life, in your business, in your relationships with your husband, your children, your clients, your friends. I mean, because once this door of of human design opens and one walks through, you're gonna get blessed. You're mm -hmm. gonna get blessed in some way. I can't tell you how, but you're gonna get blessed in some kind of way. If it is simply knowing that on the days where I feel stressed, cause it's a big stress management tool for me, I put on crystals that help me have patience, that help me mm -hmm. be grounded because I get frustrated. 
and I'll say, fuck it and be done. But I need to have patience. It's cultivating the body. Yeah. With your rest. You really saying horizontal thinking time and practicing it and seeing how it works and then noticing all along, you have been the queen of naps. You have been the queen of chill the freak out. You have done that. And being able to give yourself grace and space, especially with that client where you had something due, you know, and it wasn't coming and that could drive somebody hours away. Right. And you needed to deliver because you, you getting paid. I know. So you I was know? Like, Let's try this. I know. You were, right? able to, you were able to find within your body and in your spirit and your heart and your mind, because you, you got to come from your heart as an ego centered projector, that, that authority, um, that, that design, that strategy that goes with all of that, you got to be able to um, settle yourself. And you were able to do that. And so as we begin to wrap up, because this, everybody is just the beginning. We are just opening the door and stepping in. We haven't even walked through oh, the first room yet. So man, yeah. We've just been tipping, towing, tiptoeing, tiptoeing you know, yeah. this experience. I want to find out from you, what offerings do you have coming up in December of 2022 and then in 2023? Or you may have some things that are already um, available to people that they can take advantage of. What's coming up? What you got to, to offer to folks? Where can people find you on, on your website and social media? Yeah. So the best place to come to dip your toe in is at my website which is my name, stephaniezong.com. And Zong is spelled Z like in zesty, since we're talking about spice, H-O-N-G.com. And what I have coming up in December is, and this is exciting because this is actually the first time I'm blending together. For those of you who are entrepreneurs or coaches or consultants, or you're looking to, you know that you need to brand yourself in an authentic way and create a you know, you know that you're marketing your services and you're like, I would love to sprinkle in this human design. I would love to be able to have my marketing and my energy play on the same team, right? And not burn out and not have hustle. So um, I've created a marketing magic workshop. It's so funny that you said magic, literally. And so this is a this um, is happening on December 16th. It's a two hour live virtual workshop on Zoom. And then this is where you get a chance to be able to tap into, even if you're new, your energy type, your strategy and authority that we talked about to help you build a really aligned marketing plan that helps you to have to grow with a lot more flow using the energy, your best energy and your awesome aura and using your decision-making, like where, again, we're dropping from here, like not Google, Google's not making the decisions, but you make a marketing plan that gives you a lot more ease and flow and growth. And so that'll be a really fun live mentoring party. Um, And so if you're interested in that as a beloved member of Ananda's community, um, you're going to have a special discount to get $50 off that workshop which will be a special coupon code for you that I imagine will be in the show notes underneath. And then for those of you who are really interested in thinking about how human design can help you in your life, whether it's in your partnerships or boundaries, right? And just like your personal work, like we've described parenting, um, I offer human design readings as well too. So we can just deep dive into what your unique divine design looks like And you'll walk away with three specific tips, depending on the topic you're interested in, really kind of experimenting that you can experiment with and see how that might change your life. And where can people find you on social media? Like what social media? Oh, right. Yes. So on social media, the the best places to be are on Instagram. I am at, my handle is I am Stephanie Zong. And then also on LinkedIn, if you're interested in things like human design, 
leadership, like owning your thought leadership, owning your brand there too. I share content there around helping you to really advance professionally by being more you. Wow. Well, Stephanie, I thank you so much for um, zooming in and sharing on the Thriving Mindfully podcast how you have um, allowed human design to spice up your life and your career, your relationships, all the way around from the inside out unapologetically. Mm. I appreciate you so much too. And I felt right. Like Mm -hmm. when we talk about, even with human beings, like we, we all, whether we do human design or not, we talk about how some people's energy feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. And that was like an instant thing because the way you, you live out your design, Ananda is just so it's just so beautiful and it's nourishing and powerful at the same time. Thank you. I am a mirror to you, my soul sister love. We like, like attracts like baby. Uh-huh. It sure does. And manifesting generator types all up in the house. And it's really interesting that these first few conversations I'm having on the podcast with others about human design, all projectors like somehow I did I forgot that you were a projector I remembered your husband being a manifesting generator yeah. when you were talking I said wait is she and then I was like okay I'm gonna just let her tell me what she is because I was like and then when you said projector I said of course she is of course she is. <laughs> yes I'm also a Gemini so I think that's why I thought for a long mm-hmm. time I was a manifesting generator because I love variety which is why I love hanging with manifesting generators and I love going on different types of tangents. And I I love how we are just deconditioning too, right? Like I'm deconditioning from and allowing rest. Mm -hmm. And what you said about changing the story of quitting, it's like, no, it's like designed to shift gears and pivot with purpose. And be like that, that served me a certain way. And and now I'm moving on and, and inspiring the rest of us to be able to embrace variety, you know, and embrace that a road doesn't have to be straight and mm-hmm. doesn't have to be and to to spice up our life the way that we yes are called to not the way that society culture family anybody else your peers anybody else around you that is dictating and it's um it's very important everybody that we continue to tune in to that wisdom that is mm-hmm. in our bodies as we move from 2022 into 2023, or if you're listening to this in 2024, as you move to the next moment, it's very important for us to tap in because our wise, loving, and well ancestors are always standing by along with creator, whoever you call creator, whatever your spiritual practices are, that higher being. And there are forces out here good, well, loving, wise forces, angels, ancestors, spirit guides, master teachers that are awaiting the invitation to support us in spicing up our life. And one of those ways that we can tap in and and be our real selves unapologetically is with the support of human design and professionals like Stephanie and myself. And so you'll know, I trust from my gut as a manifesting generator from my sacral authority that the offerings that Stephanie has, the um, resources that she provides in her newsletter, in her um, articles, in her speaking gigs, and in all of her work, all her sharing on social media platforms, that you will know that it is for you when it is time. We don't worry about that. We know that the right people will find us. The same with me. You'll know if Thriving Mindfully Academy is for you, if a one-on-one coaching relationship is for you, if a book that I've written is for you, all of that. What we are here to do is to present more items on the buffet of life for you to choose from and unique items that are spicy because of who we are and where we come from. 
So with that, I'm going to say thank you, Stephanie Zong, my soul sister love, for being with me on this journey. Everybody, tune in for more conversations in the Spice Up Your Life series on Thriving Mindfully podcast. And tune in for some special messages on how you can access the code that Stephanie talked about, because I think I might want to do that too. <laughs> and to the party. Right. How you can access the offerings that I have coming up as well. So just stay tuned. There are more messages. Stephanie, you want to say anything before we sign off? Give you the last word. I just want to say, I appreciate you. I love you, Ananda. And to everyone out there is just to remember you are 4 million to one miracle. Yes. So the world needs you to shine unapologetically. And Ananda and I are, are with you and celebrate you today. And so I just hope you just like dig into the things that make you different. What if those were the things you were here to make a difference? I know that to be true. Love. I love that. Thank you.